So I'm going to switch gears on you. Uh Uh-oh. And before I really get into like the the meat of this, I'm going to switch gears. So I want to talk about, there's a lot of people that watch this and listen to this that um, are like high school guys that are, you know, that's the reason why I, I, I don't think I've ever told you, but I started getting hit up by so many young, young men wanting to join and women that want to join the military. And they're like, you know, I, you know, <laughs> you're going to get a kick out of this. You probably, actually, I said it to you. You've probably said it in your, in your youth that like, Hey, if, Oh, you want to get better at push ups, Just do a bunch of fucking push ups, Right. Yeah. Like you want to get better at pull-ups, just do pull-ups, bro. And, um, so I got hit up by like hundreds a day of, of, of these young men and women that are wanting to join the military that, uh, want to get in shape. So that's why Josh and I wrote those, you know, training prep books. But I want to hear your thoughts on, you know, put Cody back at 17 years old. Oh, man. Yeah. And then now, like, you're joining. Like, so what, what, off, what advice would you offer guys that are, you know, looking to join the military, go recon, or want to be MARSOC or whatever, or just advance in the military in general? Like, you, you got some advice for these, these youngsters? Yeah. I think we can call them youngsters now because <clears throat> we're, we're not those. It's called respect time. You know, I – I only joined the Marine Corps to be a scout sniper, so I had to go the infantry route. I didn't, I didn't know really of recon, and, and, I, and I think I did, Same. but yeah. recon didn't have like a scout sniper. You know, at the time, you know, I wanted like that. A, back then it was like an outlander. It was like a yeah, there's there's a. Something I think it was about still like it. OJT when I first came in. Oh, or not OJT. No, 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 no. They had the MOS. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think 2000, 2001. Okay. Yeah. And so, and I remember like so I wanted to be a scout sniper, so I go to boot camp. I, and I wasn't like a great runner, wasn't great like do push ups, oh, pull ups. Yeah, man, it's a weird concept. <laughs> Even though I graduated boot camp at 145 pounds, do you believe that? You were heavier than me. Dude, I, was, my, I was 142 when uh, I graduated. My wife pulled out a shirt yesterday because she's making a quilt of like all of my shirts instead of like having them in a drawer somewhere. And uh, it was my, you know, the drill instructor shirts. They wear those little like mesh shirts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the battalion shirts. Oh my god, yeah. dude, it was a small, <laughs> and I fit in that thing. And I thought like I was just like this big wearing it, but um. But I would say the best advice is time. So anyway, and don't lose sight of what your goal is, right? So do everything in strides. And what I mean by that is when I got to the School of Infantry, they were doing a recon screen. They're like, hey, who wants to sign up for recon? Because there was a recon contract guys that signed up. And I'm like, shit, I'll try. And they're like, get away, boot. You can't swim. I'm like, but I wanted to be recon. Well, moral of this story is that once I decided that I wanted to go to the Force Reconnaissance Organization or the unit, I worked on my swimming. You know, I, you actually, I seek you help. actually applied yourself. Yeah, I applied myself. I yeah. seek help. Uh, when I was getting ready for all my selections that I've, that I've been to, what I do, I seek help. I ask guidance. I didn't try to reinvent the wall myself. That's the problem where people get lost, right? Well, I've gotten this comment a couple of times. Like, so we, you, you've probably seen the books, but there's yeah. a lot of swimming in them. And some of these guys go, well, I don't have, they want to take selection for MARSOC. They want to do a recon contract. And like, well, I don't have access to a pool. What should I do? Uh, maybe you should find access to a pool. Why well, I don't have access. Well, like, I, I don't know what to tell you, bro. Like if you're not going to swim at all and you think you're going to jump in, and, you know, go tread water for 45 minutes and, you know, swim 500 meters and under, you know, under 1430, like, and that's, that's the thing is like, I think social media has screwed people's heads so much because they see it right there. They see the soft guy. They see the SWAT guy. They see the green bread, the Navy SEAL, the Marine Raider. They see it all. And they're like, Oh, as as easy as I can to like double click it and like it, put a little red heart on there. I can do it. I can do it. Yeah. I remember coming back from my second deployment with the infantry. I was a, I was a scout sniper, and I'm like, dude, I have to get out of this toxic environment, and like it's time for the next level. Josh talks about that a lot about the negativity that everybody just kind of. It just it lost it, man. I had that old breed of, of Marines that like were my mentors and leaders, and they were getting out because they were like all prior OF one, you know, before that vets. And it wasn't very, it was very normal for those guys to get out at, you know, four to eight years or whatever. Uh, and they were, they were still in Marines. And so I go home on leave and I knew as soon as I came back, like I had another week and then I had to take my, I was doing my force reconnaissance uh, screening. And, uh, I was like, dude, I just, I just kind of suck at swimming. So what I do, I brought my camis home. I'm back in my high school town, right, where people are still doing the same thing. I went to the YMCA. I got in the pool. The lady told me, you can't put your head under water. I'm like, okay, whatever, dude. And I realized, what did I want more in life? Did I want excuses or did I want actions, right? And I swam, and it still sucked. But it was enough to know, like, okay, I know at this point in time I'm starting to break, and this is how I can kind of cope with that. 
So when I actually get to the X, get to that objective area, being the screening or selection that I might not be 100% at, I at least know that I can make it to this point. Yeah. And I also know how to regain my calmness and or do the basics, right? Because people will go attack things like, oh, I have to be the best runner, the best swimmer. Like, no, you don't. At the end of the day, to a certain degree, you just need to meet the standard. And people put and their do your own, best. You guys, do your yeah. freaking best. Because like I remember when we would run, like back in the day when we would run screenings and stuff, it's like I was looking for, yeah, you have to meet the standard, right? And I always give an, an example, like you need to be around a 280. Like this idea that you need to be six foot five, you know, jacked and tan and like. The Swede. Running, yeah, the Swede, basically the Swede. Like yeah. that, that perception is not real. Um, for instance, like Eddie Bravo, that's one of the toughest dudes that I know. He's very normal looking. He's, he's like one of the tiniest Raiders I know, but the dude could hi- hump, carry more than me and hump up a mountain faster than I can. And, but I, I was always, we were always looking for, in Anoki, we were looking for like the heart. We were looking for guys that maybe they weren't getting, maybe they were only getting 80% on everything, but the dudes that just had that kind of no quit mentality, you know, that came prepared that you could tell that came prepared. And that's the thing, man. Like, dude, I wasn't – my very first – I mean, shit, when I went to RIP, the indoctrination program, dude, I think I ran maybe like 30 screenings, I think, because every like twice yeah, a same. week, something stupid, yeah. right? But it's to the point that, that was like autopilot. But thing is, like people want that instant gratification. They're like, how do I get – how do I build muscle and run a 16-minute, you know, three-mile? <laughs> I'm like, you don't. You don't, Unless bro. you're a freak. Yeah. And thing is, is like people, people are like willing to sacrifice their youth – and the journey for the now response, right? Right. So, like, well, the, and they, and there's this because of social media and because of how much you know Google. Like, when we ca- I came in, there was no fucking internet. Yeah. You know, they're, they're like, what the hell was the internet? You know, we had pagers. So this Definitely this had a pager. <laughs> this generation, they, you know, and I, I don't mean I don't want to knock them, but like they there's so there's so much information out there they feel that they're entitled to the information yeah you're entitled i'm entitled to know everything beforehand when no you here's the here's the standard you need to go prepare and then you need to go experience it for yourself yeah it just it just takes it takes time it's an investment right like no one gets a million dollars in the bank account by putting one dollar in there right it takes time and it takes that like constant like investing into yourself to like to be successful to be successful and uh, I mean, I don't, I don't, people aren't willing to sacrifice. I'm not saying sacrifice your life, but people aren't willing to, not all the time, but most of the time, people aren't willing to invest and do a sacrifice. Like, for instance, when I finally became a force of constant marine, all I wanted to do was be a big jack dude right. and like kicking doors. Newsflash, because I was a sniper for so long before that, I was put on a recce team and I'm still eating MREs. I'm still living still in, in the bush. bush. Yep. And I'm still running like, <laughs> six plus miles a day because that's what my team did we were the reconnaissance team so we had to have like that was your requirement that's what you needed and i'm like bro when are we gonna get to the gym because i wanted to be that stigma i wanted to be that big jacked force guy that i looked up to when i was in the sniper platoon and my team leader told me he's like uh you can run you can go to the gym after we run and i never went to the gym because i was so smoked right and i was just a small little bean pole I remember we went to staff. Do you remember that? We yeah, went to staff academy together. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dude, that was a while, long, that was a while ago. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was so stupid. <laughs> and I, I remember I was like, I was like, I think that's when we met, right? I think so. Yeah. And we met and I was like, how long have you been in? And yeah, I went, how long? Four or like, five years? Four and a half years. Four, I was like, what the fuck are you doing here? And he's yeah. like, I don't know. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> We're PT. <and laughs> oh, those days. But we had a good we had a good crew. For, like if you're gonna go through, I mean, not to jump subjects from high school, but if you're gonna go through like PME, Dude. do it with a bunch of. We had Heffington. We had all. <laughs> we had like eight dudes, man. Yeah, yeah. Like we ran that place. Yeah, it was it like was a, it was a total clown show. But uh, I actually didn't mind it because all you guys were there. Anyways, back to high school guys. You're you're not you're not entitled to the information, and you got to put in the work and the time. Like it's not gonna happen. You're not gonna be a super stud when you graduate. Um, you go to BRC and you graduate, like we all know those guys, like you get out. I mean, I was one of those guys too, like cocky as shit. Oh, when you get out of the course? Yeah. When you, when you graduate BRC. Um, but yeah, the best advice is just, just do it. The worst thing you can ever do is not. And when, when times get tough and you might, and understand that you're, you might fail and that's okay. It's right. It's okay. It's, it's, it's okay to fail. I mean, actually, I remember I didn't even pass my first screening. I didn't pass the swim. And I tried. I just didn't pass it. 
I ended up getting like invited back because like, I had, I guess, the heart they were looking for. And then I had to like prove myself for the next one. But at least got me in the doorway. And it, it devastated me, dude. Um, but the problem is, is like, I didn't quit. I did not pass, meet that you standard. Learned. You learned from I it. I learned. And I'm just yeah. like, oh, my God. And it, it helped me respect the environment that I was trying to go to even how, more. How serious how serious yeah. you really had to take it. Because it's yeah. not like a hand-me-out organization. And, you know, one of the big analogies, that I, not analogies, but like, it's like I have a bunch of people that hit me like, hey, how do I become a Navy SEAL? I'm like, well, I don't know. Talk to SEAL. I'm not a SEAL. But I can only imagine what those young those young sailors are going through when they're going through buds. I mean, being at BRC, you know, we're right there where yeah. buds is at and, uh, or at least at the time, but it's like, it's all about mindset, right? Like those guys haven't been put through certain rigors inside Navy boot camp, And so when they get to that first like hardship, like I'm hungry, I'm tired, I'm wet. Well, they get stuck in that. They get stuck in that. They make a permanent decision in a te- like a temporary problem. Like yeah. you get stuck in that. And you, you and I both know it. Like you get on that E and E and those long patrol phases and you're like, and you know, you're, doing these long ruck runs and in the sand and just it's supposed to suck it, it does but it all ends yeah whatever it all pain ends. whatever you can't pain stop time. yeah whatever pain like that's what was my mentality and i was a little older when i went through it but that was my mentality it was like sure you can put me through whatever you want but this shit comes to an end eventually absolutely you got to go home so when you when you got when you go home i'm done so yeah, like no one it's just like a dating someone right no one wants the girlfriend like hey you want to go on a date sure and it's just that's people want the challenge they want the, the struggle right they, not the struggle really that sucks but they they want like the engagement aspect so like no one's like hey i want to be a raider okay here's your device uh here's your uniform. no you gotta yeah it people, means nothing then. it means nothing so those times where it sucks and it's scary and you feel like if you're not feeling Unless you're just a freak of like a freak of nature where nothing phases you, but if you're not wanting to quit inside, <laughs> yeah, like right. you're you're probably just a freak, or like it, this is not that important to you. I mean, I couldn't tell you. I went to when I went to rip, I wanted to quit every day, and I was a I was a sergeant going through, and there's all so like, was I. It was horrible. It was horrible. Like I'm I would horrible. literally like lay on the bed with my other buddies, like shaking, like Are we going to the pool today? Because <laughs> they're like, Hey, we're going to the pool. Let me just tell you real fast. They never had a key to the pool, so we always had to jump the wall. That should tell you what type of training we were doing. It's called scary training. <laughs> and That's a good term for they're it, like, scary training. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to go to the pool. Oh, my God. They're going to like make someone quit today or someone's going to quit. It's well, just, back then, I mean, yeah, it was scary. Not, back then, people died on the reg and rip. 100%. Yeah. But was, I'm a grown man. Yeah. Well, ish, grown-ish man. And I'm like shaking in front of like these like 18, 19-year-old kids because they don't get it. I'm like, dude, I've seen some stuff. But like I'm really freaking out right now, and these dudes are so young, whippersnappers, and they're just they're in the pipeline, right? So it has to pass this, and they're all fighting for one seat, so they don't care. They're just like hard tanks. I'm like, oh my god, I, I hope I can make it today. But I wanted to quit almost every day, especially every day we hit in the water. But it was good because I just enjoyed and appreciated being a reconnaissance marine that much more because I earned it. I worked my butt off for it, and it all paid off at the end. But it, nothing Absolutely. comes. Nothing comes easy. Or nothing. Nothing worth anything comes easy. There you go. That's yeah. a better way to put it. Absolutely. Yeah. But it's okay, it's okay to feel hit, hit walls and challenges. It's okay to hit struggles. It's, it's okay to reset and like kind of recock, regroup, and then reengage. Uh, Do you th- so? Uh, kind of switching subject. So I'm 17. Yeah, I want to join the Marine Corps. Do do you think that I should be like doing uh, shooting and tactics and everything? Absolutely not. I agree. I'm the same way. You, the only, I remember when I wanted to join the boot camp, uh, when I joined the Marine Corps, I was, I signed up at a 17 dude. I would pick up like logs and like my buddy and I would like, like thrash each other. Like yeah. hold it above your, like just stupid stuff, right? Like stupid shit. Like we would make fun of people doing now, but like we hold it above your head, hold it out in front of you, do squats just cause like we wanted, we didn't know what to expect. Right. It was a very scary step. But, dude, I didn't shoot a gun. I was a scout sniper as soon as I joined, and I went to the school. I didn't shoot one gun before I came in. Not one. But, I did. That's, I, th- I think that's a good thing. I did no room clearing. I did play paintball because paintball was fun. That's what It was a healthy, you know, uh, activity. Healthy activity yeah. with, with good friends and whatnot. Uh, but the thing is, like, once again, people were like, oh, that dude's got cry precision JPC in an airframe. I need this now. I need to buy this before I yeah, go to boot camp. No, like, uh, uh, no, you don't. Yeah. I'm like, how about you go learn? Well, achieve what you're trying to do. Learn think, what it is you about, achieved. Think about as a recon team leader and you get some boot that came in that had been doing airsoft and CQB tactics his whole Oh, uh, yeah, like, I've had those. I would be livid. I've had those guys. And I'm like, what are you doing? Because there's a... There's a huge misconception of like the airsoft realm. Like, oh, that dude is like super tight, or that guy is super great on Call of Duty. He's like a great tactician. Uh, 
That's not real. You're None right. of that is real. Right. Uh, playing a game or playing airsoft is not combat because what they don't understand is that people go into like an airsoft paintball mindset where like I don't want to get shot, but if I do, it's not a big deal. I'm not dead. Yeah. I just raise my hand and I'm out of this game. When you go to combat and you're shooting at someone that's shooting at you with live bullets, the concept is completely different. The, the, the way your brain's processing, the chemicals that are being released, the right. way you're, you're utilizing your tactical mindset, the whole, the whole chessboard changes. That's what, and that's the reason why I've told guys like, well, should I, what courses could I take? What should I, uh, nothing. You should get in shape. That's it. And like, like study and get in shape and, and, and don't worry about it. The Marine, believe it or not, Marine Corps, that's what they're good at is teaching and training like that. We're, we're professionals at it and they're going to teach you what you need to know. And you're going to have experienced guys to, to teach you what you need to know. Yeah. Don't build bad habits. Absolutely. I mean, I was a, I was a CQB instructor as a sniper instructor, uh, special reconnaissance instructor at the, uh, Raider training center. And you know, a lot of guys are like, Hey, I, I went to this course. So I was in X, Y, Z platoon shooting pistol thing before I got here. Those are like my worst students because they had an ego that they weren't willing to break because they chest pounded getting into the organization. They made it because they obviously showed like the proper, you know, you know, uh, attributes that we were looking for. But when it came to certain aspects of like, especially in that, uh, that shooting environment, they had super bad habits. They just weren't willing to break. And then people that hit me up like, Hey, what do I need to do to go to Mars? Like, like, uh, nothing like Get prepare yourself, yeah. contact the recruiter. More importantly, if you, I tell people once you contact the recruiter and they give you the app, hit me back up. Yeah. Once you get a selection date, hit me back up. Yeah. Because it's, I don't, I don't care about, it's not wasting my time because one thing I do like about social media is that it is a way to connect to people to kind of like educate. But I'm also a realist like, yo bro, don't waste my time. If this is not for you, like, I don't care about your excuses. Like I can only tell well, you this. I, in I just want to say real quick that you cannot join the Marine Corps and go straight to Marsoc. I know we kind of jumped that, but like, yeah, you, yeah, you can't, not, you can't. And it's a good thing establish a baseline yeah figure out what it is you want in life because you might like the picture you might like the recruiting video but you might get in the military and realize that this structure is just not for you or you might see some guys that are marshall and be like you know what man that guy was a butthead to me or that guy was super cool and i want to join or yeah. maybe i'm not i have a family now that i didn't have before i joined and that's definitely a consideration yeah and, yeah. and it's okay just yeah. because social media has the pictures blast or just because timmy next door is x doesn't mean you have to be at the end of the day, it boils down to being happiness, well, like and, being happy. And I think we missed the thing. Like I hit a lot of people to say I was just this or I was just that. And it makes me want to slap them. Like, dude, listen, you, you, like 0.4% of our population of 333 million served the country. If you served, yeah. fucking you're my friend, dude. I don't care if you you were the an admin guy, a Moto T guy, an armor. I don't give a shit what you were. If you had the balls to go to tra basic training Absolutely. and put a uniform on and live that military life for a time, you and I are friends. The only dudes I don't like is like, I was going to, but uh, yeah, I wanted yeah. to, but yeah, like, you know, all the time, like, Hey man, I was just a straight leg, you know, ex battalion guy, you know, thanks for your surf. I'm like, no, thank you, dude. Yeah. Like you were just like, like, I don't know who you don't, think I so am. Don't, don't, don't sell yourself short. There's a lot don't of jobs out there. Don't sell yourself yeah. short. Some of the best students that go through the Marslock pipeline are non O3 background because they're eager. They're open-minded. Oh, they have something to prove. They have something to prove, yes. And there's some cockiness, some not cockiness, but they're just they're excited because they want to accomplish something never that has done never it. done it. They've never done it. Yeah. And they're just they're a clean state trooper. Um, I was that way. I was a poke coming in. Uh, no comment. <laughs> you got to you got to say something better than that. You got you got you, you can't leave me ha hanging with no comment after I say I was a poke. I will say this too. Some of my best friends that are in organizations within the Marsoc community and in other organizations were, did come from like non infantry backgrounds. So I, I actually, I've had a lot of conversations is about this actually. And, um, my first force recon platoon, there was only, I want to say like three f former O three elevens or O three sixty nines. Everybody was from a different, which is pretty like that many. That's a lot back right. then, back in 2003, 2004. Um, but this was what was interesting. Everybody was from so vast different MOSs, that platoon could do anything. Yeah. Like we had a boat mechanic, we had a motor T mechanic, we had a, a water purification Force specialist. Force multiplier, man. Yeah. So it's like, because here's the thing, guys, you have to think about is we are all trained to do, like once you get to the unit, if you, once you go recon or once you go become a Marine Raider, we're all trained to basically do the same thing. So we all have a base, like base level skills. 
but it's what else you bring to the table that really makes you an asset. Like, oh, well, I actually know how to work on a 55 um, horsepower Johnson motor. You know I what don't. I mean? Because, yeah, you know, most guys don't, you know, but when you're 14 miles, you know, off the coast of, you know, whatever country and your little Zodiac boat goes dead, yeah, all of a sudden that boat mechanic you were making fun of is now your best friend or, you know, the guy that can work a hot wire vehicle or the guy who knows how to turn um, your water your water bladder into a freaking hot tub when you're in Afghanistan, which happened. That's Did you have one of those? Hot water pool? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah. And it's crazy, man. Like water purification guys, they're like, oh, I know how to do this, but boom, boom, boom. Next thing you know, you have a hot tub. Yeah. You know? So it's like you said, yeah, people just got to get past, like, I got to be, I got to be this path, become this end state. The greatest thing about Marsock is you could have any MOS. You yeah. can literally be anything. You could join and be aircraft mechanic. And, and that's then, cool. And then, ta- and then take over. Because yeah. just like you said, Nick, like some of the best guys on my team came from the non O3 background because they were diverse. They had a different way of thinking. I don't want all the guys that have the same thought process. Mongo smash. I want Mongo smash and other dudes like uh, Mongo don't smash. Like <laughs> not right now. Let's not... Mongo fix this thing. <laughs> yeah, right. And um, and nothing else is. And it's all about being like um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like self reliant, right? Yeah. You're you can. That's what special operations is. It's re- being able to rely independently within your team, right? In in any type of environment that exists and accomplish the mission. Well, if everyone is a type of like, you know, job skill set and a, and a problem arises, it's kind of hard to be flexible. Right. Uh, but when you have those different thought processes that go into that team aspect, I mean, dude, everything is accomplishable. Everything is possible. And, um, you, and you guys like the team and the, or, you know, whatever the platoon team, whatever you want, whatever you're at, like you can accomplish so much more. Yeah. And like for people that are listening to this right now, if I was a 17 year old kid, and I wanted to join the Marine Corps and my end state Lisa right now at 17, I wanted to be a Marine Raider. What I would do, this is a weird concept, people, take advantage of bonuses that the Marine Corps is offering you. I think you can go into like Cybercom, you can go into like EOD, like whatever you can go in as an entry level thing. Go Even in there. Combat engineer. Combat engineer. Yeah. Go in there, get that money and put it away in the bank. Don't spend it 18 year old at Jacksonville, North Carolina. But like put that money in the bank, learn a skill set. See what you think about that, a transitionable skill set on, uh, on top of that. And then once you meet the requirements to go to, you know, selection. But, but not only that, like if you're, if you're in a, a job like that, say you're a combat engineer, one, you're, holy shit, that's an asset to a team. 100%. Um, but now you have the time to actually train for three years to prepare yourself for selection. Yeah, because if you think you need to be an infantryman to go to MARSOC, let me tell you about all the infantrymen that hit me up on Instagram. Like, Hey, I want to go to Marsock, but my command sucks. I want to go to Marsock. I got to do this stupid, stupid Mew again. I got to do this stupid training. They're always gone because they're training for the worst case scenario. Right. And it's like, okay, you're going to go into the dime a dozen plot of land and just suffer where your command's not going to be super supportive. But when you go to the external command, like a non infantry background, be like, oh, uh, yeah, we'll absolutely, you know, sign your paperwork so you can go to selection or we'll definitely give that time off to go do this stuff. But, Cody, I want to just I want to kick in doors and shoot people in the face. Yeah, so does everyone else. And let me tell you how much of that's happening within the organization. Uh, it's called sign up and see what happens. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Put your time in. So, hey, but basically what we're saying, guys, is and I think Cody's saying the same thing is focus on focus on you, focus on your physical fitness, focus on your brain. Um, hell learn a language you know what i mean like that's a that's a benefit yeah like that that's actually super great advice like kids are so not kids young people young adults are so smart nowadays right like the answers to the world is in your fingertips right like this device right here can tell you everything you need to know about anything in life right right and thing is like they want to watch tactical videos at the age of 17 but they never even shot a gun right they don't even have like a proper stance but that's more important than like rosetta stone or a free language your right. tactical, I don't get paid extra money for how I shoot and perform in like a shoot house or in nope. combat. I get paid extra for a language. That's a weird concept, people. You can get paid up to like three languages in the military, at least in the Marine Corps. That's that's a bunch of money. People are like, I don't yeah. care about money. I just want to be an operator. Okay. <laughs> Come to our organization with a language already and you can shave off potentially nine months of language course. If you have a certain skill set language that is going to an operational battalion and you meet all the requirements, you can shave off that entire like language course or a good portion of it. So if you want to be that quicker to like kick it indoors or doing all the cool guy be stuff, being a badass, learn your language. So there you go. Uh, PT, 
uh, find a good program. It doesn't have to be mine. It can be anybody's, but find a solid, find, find a solid program to follow, increase your physical fitness, and then learn to speak some languages. Yeah, man. Learn your history too. I feel well, like a dad. I am a dad, but I feel, you are a dad. <laughs> I, like, I go to school, stay in school, don't do drugs. Eat PT, your eat your weedies. Eat your no vegetables. Eat your vegetables. Oh and yeah, meat. your vegetables. <laughs> or drink them. Do some strong drinks. Yeah. But yeah, it's like don't worry about the tactical stuff. The tactical stuff will come later. But like train your brain, train your body, and then, and then go from there. 